and that's how it works. Okay. I think we're good to go, Johnny. We are, uh, we, we're good. Live on Facebook, Friday night. Friday night. Friday night Friday hangout, night. man. The Friday night flavor. Man, I'm, I'm not going to lie, dude. I'm, I'm loving your, uh, your backdrop there. Yeah, it has, it has a whole bunch of different things, a bunch of different topics that we can, we can talk about. You got the cell phone there, which uh, could be for social media. You got the laptop there, which most of us have been on Zoom calls uh, for the past month. Uh, we got some gears over here turning. You got a guy in a tie. You got fingers pointing. You got search stuff. You got clouds, ideas, innovations. Yeah, so it's a pretty I like cool it. backdrop. I, I think uh, my favorite one, let me get close. It's not going to be to do with the tie. I mean, don't get me wrong. I like to dress up. I'm going to have to go with the gears, right? Because sometimes I feel like my brain is just always yeah. in, in, in motion. It's in Constantly motion. going. Constantly going. Now, I've been that guy with a tie and a suit, but I have either boxers on or shorts underneath. Yeah. Or or the party, you know, your, your um, what is it, professional up top and, and party on the bottom. Yeah, yeah. We've, we've seen a lot of that going on. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Zoom, I tell you, I should have invested in Zoom oh, months ago. Who would have thought, right? Yeah. I know we had Skype back in the day, but Skype doesn't hold a candle to to Zoom and the capabilities that it has, Not especially now. for business and school, things like that. I've been having problems getting on Skype. I tried to do it, and I use it a lot when I, when I deployed, but I haven't used it very much. And I think Sandra and I, we used to – I feel like we used it to – communicate to her family and then facebook really kind of took that prop took that market share back and offered all those features that it has now so um right so skype is kind of like the vcr or uh myspace of, yeah. the, of the internet world nowadays i think it might be i don't know if you use skype uh, let us know and let us know what your thoughts are. If you prefer Skype over Zoom, let us know why. Comment com comment below or something or, or chime in at and tell us what your preference is. Yeah. But let me tell you something about Skype. They were pioneers. They were one of the first yep. to ever do it. Yep. And as time went hey, but, on, people just started making it better. Yeah, but sometimes being the first isn't necessary. I mean, yeah, there's advantages to be first to market, but you know, you look at the technology of the iPhone, right? Apple didn't create the iPhone, the MP3. I think some dude in Australia made it. I can't remember where, but that, I mean, that technology had already been around. Old boy just knew how to market it and capitalize and he had a vision and he was able to execute. I mean, that's, that's the ingredient. You can have the best invention idea out there, but if you can't execute, yep. ain't yep. nothing. Absolutely. Uh, we just got a message that Mike Butler, Chief Butler. What's up, Mike? How you doing? What up, Chief? Uh, appreciate you getting on. I know the last time we got on, we had some technical difficulties. A lot of people yeah. couldn't hear, hear my voice. It was just like like you, Sean, talking to yourself. Yeah. And yeah. just my mouth. Yeah. My mouth was just moving along. Story so my nobody life. could hear me. So I went out and I invested in a new microphone. Right it here. is fancy. It's, that, a, it's, a, it's a pretty nice microphone. So it lets me... Uh, uh, engage with you guys. So I love it. And I want to thank everybody out there who, who tuned in. I know it was a last second thing, uh, but thank you guys uh, for taking the time just to, to listen to Sean and I. Um, yeah. This is the premise behind it. We just want to, we're just a couple of guys with a bunch of ideas. Um, and we just want to want to spread cheer and love and, and uh, make sure you guys are, are along for the ride. Absolutely. Uh, times and, and yeah, we just, we just want to talk. Yeah. Uh, I think, I think Sean and I are both talkers. We're both uh, recruiters and we're salesmen. So we like talking and, and just getting you guys uh, together for, for a fireside chat, so to speak, is, uh, is pretty cool. You know, when I was, before I moved to San Antonio, my last assignment in Florida, I, the first two years or the first year I sat in the, the logistics marketing spot, right? Where nobody really knew what that spot was. It was just kind of a made up position. And we had a full house. I think we were like 93, 94% mad. And I, what's the movie um, with, uh, with um, uh, they're cops. Uh, they're two cops, a comedian. What's the comedian guy's name? Will Ferrell and uh, Mark Wahlberg. Yeah. 
Yeah, and, and Mark uh, Wahlberg is like, I'm a peacock. You got to let me fly. And he's like kicking stuff all over the place. The other guys? Yeah, the other guys. The other That's guys. it. Right. And I remember thinking, man, I'm, I felt like a peacock and I needed to fly. And this is a true story. I can't make this up. True story. I was, I was doing the whole peacock scene at, at the office and I walked out the, the double doors and this is in Florida where there's wildlife all over the place. I promise you, I cannot make this up. I wish I would have had my cell phone. I go outside and there's two peacocks out, out, out the glass doors. I promise Just watching you. Watching Just you. Watch it. I, pr- I can't make it up. <laughs> and probably nobody's ever going to believe me because I don't have any photos to prove it. No. When I was up in New Jersey, we had turkeys that hung out outside the building. That was pretty creepy. Uh, Big turkeys, like Thanksgiving turkeys. Yeah. Sounds delicious. Jeez. Hey, so let's, let's do this, man. Um, piggyback on what Johnny said. Thanks for chiming in for those of you that are in. Again, we – Johnny and I have been good friends for the last couple of years. And, and, uh, my, my travel schedule is, is always pretty crazy. And then when you were a pro soup, we were never able to link, link up and kind of sit down and, and talk. So I think this whole situation that we're in, it's kind of been a, a blessing in disguise. We're able to slow down and really focus and talk. And, and uh, I'm glad we're able to do this now. Cause you know, we've been trying to just sit down and, and talk shop, talk business, talk, life after the air force for quite a while now but what i want to really kind of talk about tonight primarily tonight is is mindset right so the, i know i got an entrepreneur behind me and and i think entrepreneur can can be uh, um labeled or or defined in a lot of different ways but i want to say that a true entre- an entrepreneur they've already existed right so when i was a young airman and probably been in the air force two years i think sometimes i got labeled as a troublemaker or or somebody that just that was like come on sean just just go with us for once right but i i but me being so young and arrogant and aggressive i didn't really know how to i I didn't have any tact at the time i was too young in the air force to really understand what it meant to have tact but then i would always I would come off as if I was questioning to disrupt everything versus, but in really I was questioning the status quo. I was questioning a better way. I was, I was questioning to add value or to understand. And I think early on the entrepreneurs, I mean, there, and I hope people that are, that can listen to this and, and that are thinking, you know, when, when should I take that chance? An entrepreneur, all they are is they're, they're willing to take a risk. You know, they're risk takers at the end of the day. And, I think I've always had that mindset and I, I tend to like um, attract, I, I go toward the, the other guys or, or ladies that have that same mindset. So I think mindset is, is huge. And, and when you're talking about business development and entrepreneurship, um, what, what are your thoughts on that, Johnny? Well, I definitely agree that it takes a special skill set. Now I always talk about leadership and being an active, visible leader, things like that. Now there's different kinds of leaders. There's some leaders that, uh, that definitely lead from the front and some lead from the back, but they're leaders. People know who the leader is. Um, a lot of leaders, let's just say sports. There's some sports leaders that are quiet. Some are brash and loud, um, but they are, they are leaders of a, of a team. Now, when I think an entrepreneur, you're definitely a leader, but you have that special skill set. Uh, you're industry minded. So you are a risk taker and you're an innovative thinker you're always thinking how to get better Mm. how to get an idea and make it your own so you can we've been in in the sales business long enough where you can see an uh, an idea or a product and it gives you an idea you're like whoa that product would be better if we do it this way and that's kind of the the entrepreneur mindset you're a visionary you're always thinking your your brain never stops thinking your heart is, is just pumping with passion you're self-motivated. You don't wait for somebody to tell you to do something. Right. You're just, you're just a self-starter. You're that, you have that spark under you constantly. And you're thinking of, of ways to reach out and get your voice heard. You're kind of an influencer as well. An entrepreneur is definitely a bold, brash, out front type leader. So you can be an entrepreneur and be kind of quiet, but your actions the things that you produce, 
is your is your is your brand as an entrepreneur. So it could be it could be anything. You could be selling tires. You could be selling computers. You can be selling ideas, and people eventually follow you. And yeah. you can you just create other entrepreneurs and develop people as well. So especially today, you hit you hit it on the head when you talked about we're we're refocusing on we you know with this quarantine going on. We're, we're taking the time to not only focus on family and ourselves, but as entrepreneurs, what's the next idea? Restaurants now doing curbside. They're uh, they're they're thinking outside the box, being flexible and pivoting, like you said last time. Yep. So yep. those restaurant owners are entrepreneurs, not only because they own a restaurant, but now they're thinking strategically. Um, and it's just, it's just wild how the mind thinks and just constantly just goes. And we got the gears over here. If your gears aren't constantly going, I I personally think that you're just kind of floundering and you're, you're idle. If you're right. satisfied, if you're, if you're satisfied with what you have right now, you, you need to, you need to either reevaluate or rethink on, on your, on your growth. Uh, your, your, your potential as an entrepreneur. So yeah, I know I, I said a mouthful, but that's my mindset. I, I think though, sometimes an entrepreneur, they don't necessarily invent or reinvent I think they just notice, they recognize opportunities. They, they see, they read between the lines and, and they're innovative. Um, yeah. People of action. Yeah. And I was talking to Sandra before we jumped on here and, and I wanted, and maybe next time I'll put it up there. I was listing all the different business ventures that I've tried to go in and, and, and the majority of them I've failed at. That doesn't mean that I'm a failure. And, and maybe I just didn't understand the market. Maybe I didn't understand me. You know, I, I got, I've been involved in a few different uh, network marketing. And I think there's so much value in a network marketing company because it really does teach you business and it teaches you how to develop relationships. Granted, big, and you, you got to find a, a product that you, you can believe in, obviously. But Sandra and I really, we learned a ton and, and we were involved in a company called Adi Life. I, I still don't believe in the products, but now did it, did it work for, for us as a business model? No, it didn't. But we met some amazing people and we learned about grit. You know, we learned about consistency. We, we learned about following through. I mean, there were a ton of life lessons that we, that we were able to, to, to go through and understand. And and I just think there's 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 nothing wrong with failure. So all those businesses that I failed in, I, I never quit. And then now we have Skyline Canopies, where one day uh, I see an opportun opportunity, and like that light bulb moment goes mm -hmm. off. And I remember going home, and I'm like, Sandra, we're gonna start we're gonna start this company, and this is what we're gonna sell. And and then she ended up doing what she does. She took it, ended up quitting her her job and was able to focus on Skyline Canopies and really has done a remarkable thing. When, when you, when I look, I'm a numbers guy. When I look at the numbers on what she's been able to accomplish with, with it's straight bootstrap, right? I mean, we didn't go out and get any outside investors. We didn't ask family. We didn't ask nobody for no money, straight bootstrap. And she's been able to, to do what she does is pretty, it's pretty remarkable. Uh, I, I agree with you. Failure is very important. Uh, to build to build that, that mindset if if you're great at everything and you never fail at anything when you do get meet that moment that you fail you could just give up and then you know all hell breaks loose yeah and you're, just gonna, you're just gonna quit if you don't face failure early on when you do face it later it, it could be it can hit you right in the in the, in the head and Absolutely. It, so little failures along the way make you make you better and to comment on Sandra, Sandra is definitely a community influencer. I see her out uh, grassroots, just talking to people, relationships, shaking hands. Of course, not not today, but she's she's out there, um, no, just meeting people, meeting industry leaders. It doesn't matter what industry, but she's just out meeting people, and I think that is very important uh, to that whole mindset and just to the industry. The more people you know. The, the, the more opportunities you have 
not only to build business, but also just to make yourself better as a, as a, as a human being. Yeah. Um, so, and, and to brag on Sandra, what she does first, she does, she does people first, business second, mm -hmm. people first, business second, the money's going to come. The business is going to come. If you treat people right, if you, peel back that layer and you ask questions and we all know being a rookie recruiter and we're getting that goal over our head, we're getting that pressure, you know, everybody wants us to produce, 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 but what we fail sometimes we, 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 we miss out on the relationship mm -hmm. and that's what creates influencers, perpetuators, you know, return business, no matter whatever industry you're in, just because somebody doesn't buy your product or your service. Now, if you develop that relationship later on, they're going to come back around. And if they don't, they're going to share your product. They're going to share that experience. And you have to have the mindset, right? Like Sandra is very, very patient, takes her time. She has the mindset to really provide that customer service. Me, on the other hand, sometimes I get a little I, I like that bottom number. I want to close it. I want to close the deal. I'm like, let's do business. Let's get it going. But I do understand the value of building those relationships. So relationship number one, all the time. Yep. It's also service after the sale. I wholeheartedly believe in that. Not only when I was in, in uh, you know, recruiting, mm -hmm. but in my photo booth business and in my real estate business, uh, service after the sale is, yep. is so vital. Um, and building a, a quality network and knowing Having people that know that you care about them, you genuinely care about them. You're just not looking for numbers. Uh, it means a lot, and it, it yep. just it just it just helps you as a, as a human and as a as a business person. I can't. I think it was Entree Leadership, an awesome podcast out there. If you're looking for a good business leadership podcast, it's called Entree Leadership. Uh, Dave Ramsey, and the story was they they were interviewing this lady on the radio, and she talked about how she went and got a tire change, a, a, a normal tire change, oil change, uh, or mechanic. She, she got her car worked on. What I'm not sure exactly what she got done. Well, about a month later, she received a phone call and a card from, from the main, the main, from the shop, right? How many times have you gone and gotten your oil change or your tires rotated? And then a month later, they actually pick up the phone and they call you to make sure that your car is still running good. Mm -hmm. Now that, that was super simple. Obviously it's a little time consuming, but that went a long way as far as service after the sale. And I'm a, I'm a huge believer in that, but you just have to, it takes time. It really takes time to, to make sure you provide that service, but it's important. It's, I think it, it if you want your business to have that longevity, you're going to need to take, take the time in order to do that. I agree. Yep. How, how has social media changed our lives, man. Not only our lives as as uh, individuals, but change our life as communicators, as entrepreneurs, just as community people. How is how has social media changed changed your life? Well, I tell you this: the last month, I I thought I knew social media. I know enough about social media to know that I don't know anything about it. There, there's a whole nother world with streaming and, you know, Discord, Twitch, uh, OBS. There's all these other platforms, podcasting now. You know, my other show, the or the Rando podcast, uh, me and, and two dudes started working on it uh, about, uh, we just released our uh, eighth, eighth episode, I think. And uh, I think social media... So, all right, here's an example, social media. When I first started CrossFit, and not to get too long-winded here, I'll be short. I started CrossFit in 2011 is when I first went. And a lot of CrossFit gyms back then did not believe in social media advertising. They didn't believe in it. They believed, in, and this is okay to believe in, you know, perpetuation is one of the strongest forms of advertising. But that was only belief. Like, they didn't care. The majority of the gyms did not care to have a social media platform. Well, those hopefully a lot of those those CrossFit gyms change their ways because now, right? If you didn't believe in social media, then now how are you communicating with your customer? Right now, how are you engaging with them? How are you telling them we're still here for you? We're still going to be here after all this. 
How are you engaging with your customer? So I think social media, obviously it's, it's been important, but it's even more important now. It's even more important. Well, look at us right now, Sean. We're on social media broadcasting live on Facebook. I know. Via Zoom. So thanks for uh, allowing me the opportunity, Sean. I mean, you could have picked anybody, but you picked me uh, to come on here and join you with this, with this show. You had an idea. You had a vision. And, uh, you know, thanks for picking me. But yeah. social media has definitely changed the way uh, we communicate in life. Um, here in New Braunfels, Texas, um, there is a, a big support system for small businesses. So let me give you an example. And I know some people on here can, can definitely uh, feel me. I know that Ben Sanchez and some other people here in New Braunfels. There is a, a, a Chinese joint called Peking, China, I believe. That's the name of it. So as of last week, they, had, they, were, they were struggling just to get business. Everybody had forgot about them because they didn't have a social media presence. So lo and behold, somebody on uh, one of the Facebook pages here in New Braunfels said, hey, everybody, Peking, China, they're not any good at social media. However, their product is very quality and they have good food. So let's give them a, a shout out and let's, uh, let's flood, flood their parking lot with business. So lo and behold, today, they were flooded with business, the power of social media. Yep. So little things like that, videos, uh, you know, just different posts. People can see everything you're doing. I mean, some, some people use it for other things, but you can definitely use it for power or positive uh, things. And, and uh, I, I truly believe, I've been doing social media for a long time, since the days of uh, MySpace. Uh, but I think social media is definitely the wave of, of, of the future. Um, most of it is free. I know you have ads and things like that, but if you're not on social media to, to generate business, or even if you're not on social media, that's fine. You don't have to. Do social media. A lot of people, you know, it's cool. Um, but if you're a business person and you're not on social media, you're way off base. Yep. And, and you can't say, well, it's too late to start now. No, you need to start right now. You need to start right now. And it, you got to find a way to communicate. And people want authenticity and they want, they want to see the person behind the business. Cause that per, business and the people, I think before back way before I was born, you know, there was your business and then uh, there was your home life. And there was a, a very, very fine line between the two. Like when, after you got home, there was no more business. I think now the, the younger generations are, it's more of a blended business and home life. And if you can't not, not to necessarily take your work home, but to, to be able to, to share with your customers that you're, you're just like them, you're, you're, you're not any better than them. If you allow them into your home, if you're broadcasting, especially at times like this broadcasting from your bedroom or from your home office and you're talking to your people, they're going to know they're, they're going to build a better relationship with you. And they're going to remember that. Absolutely. So, you just have to use, you just have to use the tools properly, right? You, um, you don't want to do, do too much. You, I mean, you just got to figure out, you got to figure out what works best for you and your, your product or your service. Do we have any questions? I, I got Miss Jessica over here screening our questions. Is she? Hey, what's up, Diego? Diego Hernandez up in Florida. He's a, he's a good buddy of mine that I met about. 2005, I believe, over at Lackland. Great dude. I hope all is well, Diego. What's up, Diego? Thanks for chiming in, man. Ben Sanchez, he's, a, he's an industry leader as well. Uh, sell CBD, Go Green Botanicals. Ben and Karina, they're, they're pioneers and industry leaders. Hustlers. I think they're, they're hustlers. huge, huge hustlers. Yeah. Thanks, Ben. Appreciate you. You, you, you walk up to Ben, be careful what you say to Ben, because if, if you say something and it gives him an idea, his brain just starts just turning. Ben is definitely an entrepreneur. He's always looking for yeah. ways to get better. I don't know how if that guy sleeps, but uh, he's, he, he's on it. Hey, Chad Tanner. He said he loves us both. Thanks, Chad. We love you. I appreciate you, you my too, man. Brother. I hope, I hope all is well. Let's in, go flying, Chad. Come yeah. on. I, I see you on social media, Chad. He flying, flying airplanes and, and doing it big. So 
Thank you. Rolando Rios, he has a pager. So, Rolando, do you got the one with the with the uh, the uh, see through screen, or, or which one do you have? Use Motorola. Yeah, I remember I had a pager. that was that was old school, but that was a way to communicate. I remember I had the the roll of course, and I always had to get, have a, a payphone close by. Uh, Nine one one, and amongst other things, other messages that they that they uh, invented so that was a pretty fun time so when one of my high school jobs i worked at uh, journey's footwear right is it journey's mm -hmm. footwear and there's a little kiosk guy uh across from it and he sold and he sold pagers so he offered me a job so that was my first sale i was 16 years old and i had i had two pagers and i had a business card i got the original card here somewhere and my business my very first business card and it said beat me if you want to get turned on Wow. <laughs> yeah. I forgot all about that. That was my very, my very first side hustle was selling pagers. That, that's a good slogan. We got yeah. anybody else? Um, Diego is asking which is your preference on uh, social media. Do you use Instagram or Facebook? Instagram. Facebook. 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 All right. So Diego Hernandez asked which media, social media platform do we prefer for business. He's, he's a photographer, uh, very successful, uh, I might add. And he says he uses Instagram for his photography. Um, so I would agree. I like using Instagram because it's linked to Facebook, but Instagram is, is cool because it's more photos and you don't have to write a whole lot. You can just show the photos and people just, you know, for me, they like Instagram. So we, we built a, a lot of relationships and a lot of uh, bonds with uh, wedding venues, wedding planners, um, people that make dresses, any kind of industry uh, vendor in, in, you know, the wedding industry is linked to us so it is so powerful and i like i like uh facebook as well because facebook kind of tells a story a little bit you can kind of mm -hmm. write a longer uh, story i think little videos and things like that but I, I would i would prefer instagram i would say the younger people like a lot of the brides are on instagram a lot of the not that they're not on on, on facebook but just more people i'd say about 70 percent of our of our leads on instagram are between 21 and 30 and Facebook is about 30 to 50. So it's just a different demographic yeah. uh, altogether. And, and Diego, I don't know if you would agree with that, but that's just the way I, it, it is for us. Sean, uh, are you kind of the same? I, I think it's important to identify your target audience and then figure out where that target audience gets their information from. Uh, like YouTube, YouTube, is the second largest search engine behind Google, right? Mm -hmm. But how, how does a photographer promote on, um, on YouTube? Well, here, here's a thought. What if you set up, you set up in your, I don't know if you, if you, how you do your photography, you know, after you take the photos, you edit it. I'm not sure what your process is. Maybe you record that process and you make it into some really cool three to five minute, videos and you're promoting your photography business in a very unique way photography is all based on still images but you're you're promoting it in in on a on a video platform so um it just depends on where your audience is and i know facebook is old <laughs> you know it's where all the old people hang out and uh which is i think is valid especially when you look at those younger generations, I don't know how many of them really even use Facebook. So, um, so I think I would start off with just identifying your target audience and, and go from there. I agree. Do we have any other, does Sandra have any, any questions back there? We just got some delivery back here. Uh, so my, uh, my staff member is on, on, uh, on pause. Uh, ben Ben said uh, he only needs two hours a, a night to sleep. Two hours, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Johnny, what what do you think? So we've been doing this 
social distancing for like let's say six weeks right mm -hmm. what do you what's what are some things that you've learned in the last six weeks that you feel like that you can take now once we kind of go back to normal that you feel like you've learned that you can move better get, get better in you know i've had the opportunity to refocus so you said it earlier it, it, it has been a blessing and in, in the fact that we have been able to slow down we were going 100 miles an hour and we had just so much uh things going on from my, my daughter's softball to photo booth. And I was in, in real estate school and transitioning out of the air force. So we were going hundred miles an hour. So what I've learned is teaching my daughter's life lessons. I've learned a lot from them as well. Yeah. Although they're not in school, so to speak, they're not actually physically in a classroom. I've had the opportunity to learn a lot about myself when I'm teaching them, uh, you know, not only curriculum, you know, math, things like that, but I'm teaching them stuff about life, balancing a budget. I've, I've actually took the time to sit down with them and discuss everything in the house, not only the lights, but uh, the rent, the, the Netflix, yeah. everything. So it's, it's giving me a whole new perspective on what they are learning. Um, and, and bless the teachers out there. They're doing a phenomenal job, right. but they're learning life skills that's Teachers just don't have the time to, to teach them. So we've been learning together. I've learned a lot about myself as a dad, that I needed to slow down, that sometimes it's not always about business. It's about family. Family is the most important thing because once all this business is, is you know, gone, family's going to be there for you. Yep. And, that's, and that's one of the biggest things that I have learned. Um, and spending time with, with Jess as well. Uh, She's busy, but I've learned a lot about Jess and some of the shows she likes. You know, we've been partaking in, in Ozark and yeah. Tiger King and uh, The Office. We finished all that. Uh, but I've learned, you know, just that that our relationships within our household are so valuable and we can't yeah. take those for granted. Yep. So. Yeah, I think we're close to finishing Ozark. I, I struggled at the beginning, but now it's getting a little better toward the end, maybe because it's almost over. Yeah. But, um, or is it? No, I won't, I, I won't, I I won't ruin it for you. It's, huh? it's, it's good. I won't ruin it for you. It's pretty uh, good. I think we'll probably finish it tonight. You got a, is there something? Yeah. So ben got, asked, we got a question. Mm -hmm. At what, what point in time in your life did you realize you're an entrepreneur? Yeah. Uh, so Ben Sanchez asked, at what point in your life did you realize you were an entrepreneur? So I think I touched on this earlier, but I don't think I, so early in my career in the air force, I don't think I knew what entrepreneurship was, right? I didn't even, I don't think I understood the concept. So I, I don't, I didn't, I think I recognized it as an air force recruiter or maybe going into, into recruiting service and uh, I remember just recognizing this different kind of energy about my day-to-day -day stuff, right? I, I could go to the office and be there for 10 hours a day and it didn't, it didn't really bother me. Right. So the hours I've never been afraid to put in the hours. So I, I guess I would say to really answer your question, the idea of entrepreneurship, the idea of, of doing my own thing probably came up in 2011 but I've I've been going left when everyone else is going right since I was a young a young kid. Um, my very 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 first business, very first business. I was a there were three of us in Grandview, Texas, and we cut grass. Uh, we were myself, Chris, Chris Anthony, and uh, man, I can't remember who the other guy was, but um, we were cutting grass as a little kid. So I've been an entrepreneur my whole life. But to really say all right this is who I am. And this is, this is why I behave that way. I would say between 2011 and 2012, it took me a long time to really grow up a long time. And some would question if I've even grown up. So I don't know. <laughs> well, uh, my side of the table, I'd say 2002, I was a, I was a, uh, an aircraft maintainer, uh, up until 2002. So, then I volunteered to become a military training instructor. And I think at that point, well, I, I have, a, I think it was at that point in 2002, 
is when the light bulb flashed above my head and I said, wow, I love this leadership thing. I love being able to influence people. I love being able to motivate people and just mentor them and not only mentor them, but create a craft. And I think that is when I started uh, really opening my eyes and my scope. Uh, when my responsibility scope just broadened, that's when my mind just started taking off. So I failed at business, uh, I'd say 2003, 2004. I opened up a janitorial business. It failed. I didn't have the time for it. I had a whole bunch of ideas, but I didn't have the money for it. And I just didn't have the, the, uh, the time to go door to door. Because, I mean, let's, let's just be honest. Most businesses out there, they already have a janitorial business. So why would my brand new janitorial business be better than the guy they already have? So it was, it was a tough business to get into, a tough industry. But I failed, and it just made me better. It made me hungrier, and it allowed me to start kicking the can down the road again and think about what I can do to, to, to be better. So it took about another 10 years, and then my wife and I just, we were at a party one day, and we saw a photo booth there, and we were like, that's it. We like to party with people. We like having a good time. We like networking. We like meeting people. We like smiling and laughing and, 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 and you know, having a great time. So the photo booth business took us to the next level and mm -hmm. uh, as far as the entrepreneurship, and it's, it's taken off. So it's been a, it's been a blessing in, in, in our lives. So I'd say 2002 to answer, answer that question, Ben. Johnny, you said something just now that I think a lot of people need to hear again. You said your janitorial business, you know, why, why should they use you when they already have someone else? Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's every bit for the most part, mm -hmm. you know, with, with technology these days, I think we're going to see, we're not going to see like like iPhones and the technology with 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 Apple and the internet how over the last 10 or 15 years innovation has skyrocketed right so i don't think we'll we'll see inventions happen as fast as what we saw the last 20 years just because the technology right now is so advanced but i think everybody is going to experience that you know, that you have a business, but hold on, the business is already flooded. What would you say to somebody that comes to you and say, hey, I have an idea, but the idea already exists. What should, should I not do it because it's saturated? No, you got to, just like in real estate, I'm a brand new realtor. There's 15,000 realtors in the area. So what's going to make me different? So, mm -hmm. you know, I have a lot of different ideas of what's going to make me different. Um, and it, it, it's just talking to people and engaging, just making people feel good because uh, yeah. everybody can do the same thing. Just like skyline canopies. You got a hundred people who can do the same thing, you right. do, but what's going to set us apart. Now at that point in my life, when I failed at janitorial, I didn't not only that didn't have the time, but I didn't have the skill. I had the mind, but not the skill. So let's fast forward to 2006 when I become an air force recruiter, I started developing these skills, these sales skills, these interactive uh, opportunities and engagement with uh, with applicants and it it taught me how to overcome indifference skepticism drawbacks things like that it gave me a, a sales uh skill that that is invaluable so that is what really brought me to the next level because now i can well let's think about this why are you going to do this when you can do this so i had the, the you know i was able to guide people in, yeah. in sales and maneuver them through where I was leading the sale and it wasn't really them leading me. So that, you know, I established that I was an entrepreneur in 2002, but in 2006, I refined that skill. Yep. And nowadays, I mean, we can talk all day about what makes us different from, you know, from this business to this business to this individual, this individual. So, and that could be a whole different show Yep. in its, in its, in its entirety. No, I, I, and I put up here, You'll see talent times effort e equals skill. Mm -hmm. As skill times effort equals achievement. I, as a young rookie recruiter, man, I was, man, I was hungry, and I was hungry. Um, I was determined. I wanted to be the top recruiter 
every week I was looking at the numbers, right? Man, um, I had the effort. I didn't have I didn't have the I didn't have the talent yet of a good recruiter, right? Mm-hmm. I, I had the talent of talk, I knew how to talk to people. I wasn't afraid to talk to people. Now, I may not have known, I didn't have the skill in asking how to ask questions. Right. John Maxwell's book, right. Great leaders ask great questions. I think that's the, the title of the book. And I think there's a lot of truth there. Right. So, but, and another problem was, uh, what Sandra does really well is you ask a question. What's the next thing. When you ask a question, you got to do one thing. Listen. And sometimes, uh, sell, guys that are really eager to make that sell, they're already thinking about what their next question is going to be. We forget to just sh- shut up, be quiet and listen to the answer. All right, talent versus effort equals skill. Skill times effort, achievement. And at the end of my rookie year in recruiting, I finally made myself up to the up to the top ten, which I thought was pretty good. But then I got cocky. I got cocky, and then uh, well, what happened year two? We can talk about that another night. <laughs> but do we have any other questions? Hey, thanks, Diego. Uh, and- Diego gave a gave a a quick shout out. I appreciate you, sir. Yep. Yep. Finding finding your niche. Find what makes your customers smile. Yep. Provide value. Now I don't know if Carlos Todd. I have I, I know a young man. He's a he's in the Air Force. He's an entrepreneur. I watch him. He motivates me as well. Um, Try not to become a man of success. This is a quote. Try not to become a man of success. Rather become a man of value. That's by Albert Einstein. So I've been following this this young man, Carlos Todd. He's not only Air Force, but he's a a business leader. He's a real estate agent. He's doing a lot of different things. So we had a discussion one day. I was over at uh, at, at Bamsey, um, and we talked about value. You want to become somebody who is a valuable resource of information. Yep. You build credibility. You people look up to you for advice. And I'm I'm always I'm always uh intrigued by leadership and, and people uh of, of of value. Um I was always taught only take advice, not only, but take advice from people you're willing to trade places with. So in in the recruiting business, we get a lot of applicants that are they they are um hesitant to join or hesitant to make a life decision based on advice from different people that have never been there and done that. So I'm a firm advocate. If you're going to do something, if you're curious about taking a leap, taking a risk in business or in life, take advice from people who have been there before. Quit taking advice from naysayers, from yeah. negative people, people who have not you know, provided value not only to themselves, but to you as well. Yeah. So Carlos Todd, uh, you know, you are a man of value and uh, you walk to walk, talk to talk. And if you're on, I appreciate you. Any other questions out there? Nate Rodriguez, he says, in my experience, and this is back to what you said before, Facebook has been easier to attract local business as compared to Instagram, what am I doing wrong? Uh, so Nate wrote, say that one more time. Is that Nate the Barber? Nate the Barber. Rodriguez, yeah. Ray, yeah, Nate Rodriguez. Facebook has been easy to attract local business as compared to Instagram. Yeah. Yeah, he's saying that Facebook has been uh, more success than Instagram to attract new business and local local business and what is he doing wrong so nate if i understand you're correct you're you're trying to promote more of your business on on the instagram side is that what it reads yeah johnny what are your thoughts of that how, how would how would nate drum up his business using instagram i'd say catchy little videos um I use igtv i'm not sure if he's familiar with igtv uh i made a little video the other day it was about a 45 second clip just introducing myself Making, putting everything that I can uh, bring to the table in about 45 seconds. 
So not saying that that's going to be a game changer, but just little things like that. People like watching videos. Um, not too long. You don't want to make a long three, four minute video. Not a minute. Um, make make some kind of little uh, video clip of you cutting hair. Uh, having somebody. I mean, we we can talk offline, and I can help you with some of the things that uh, that can help you because you you have a niche. You are a you're a you're a barber in the New Braunfels community. So there's a lot of barbers and a lot of stylists and salons, but I know you have something that makes you different. We just got to present it. We got to we got to be able to capture it and present it where people know who Nate the barber is. So Nate, I, I saw you on uh, on Facebook and and you brought the attention. Uh, you know, you demanded attention just with some of your stuff. So I know you got that power to to utilize uh, your your business through all platforms, and so. Nate, if you want to call me or text me or, or we can, we can chat offline, but uh, yeah, we, we can definitely get something moving for you. So I wrote two different things. Uh, one, keep, uh, find the community influencers out there, right? Find the ones that have a bigger network than you do and bring them in, give them a free haircut, bring them in and give them the best experience, bring them in and let them see why you're different than every other barber. And I promise you, they're going to share it on their social media, right? It's a lot easier for them to do that. Um, so one, identify those key influencers in town, wine and dine them, bring it in, bring them in, give them a great experience. And then two, this is probably just as important is plan your post. Doing all these postings on Facebook and Instagram and all these other social media platforms can get, can honestly become a full-time job. So plan your posts, get a schedule, get a regimen. And there's a reason why the five o'clock news is at five. People know they can go at five o'clock and get their news. There's a schedule. People can depend on it, right? So find those, find those influencers and schedule those posts. And here, here's, here's something else that I have. I mean, you, I, I kind of I kind of got an idea from what you were saying, Sean. Don't strictly post business stuff. It's not always about business. Right. People want to know who you are as a, as a person. They want to know your family. Why should they go to you for business? Not just because you because you cut hair. It's because you care about people and, and they want to know who you are because you're funny, because you make them laugh, you make them feel good. Um, so those are the things that that I think are important. If somebody posted 100 percent business, you're probably not going to get a lot of business. I mean, let's just, let's just be honest. Um, and, and the time that you post is I've seen some businesses post at one in the morning. By the time your audience wakes up at eight your post is going to be at the very bottom. And so you're just kind of wasting. So timeliness and don't always post about business. Yep. Diego, my two cents for Nate. I photograph for Central Florida barbers, short videos and photos of them working gold. Hashtags are a must. Knowing your best times to post, super important. So I think Nate and Diego, you guys link up, man. Yep. I think there's some value there. Great minds. Excellent. Jess, you had something? That's awesome. Thanks, Diego. Okay. So what Diego was saying... This, I'm getting this from, from just, um, just take pictures of, of what you do, of your, of your shop, make like personal testimonies. If somebody has taken a, has gotten the haircut by you, come up with something, some kind of per personal testimony as well. Take photos of them. People want to hear stories as well. Yeah. I think that's, that's why you, you want to take more photos than just your business. Mm -hmm. create a create a full story yeah you know talk about how how your business came what it is today talk, talk about why you're there a lot i think i think there's a misconception that uh, people think that entrepreneurs want to be entrepreneurs because of the money i think that the money is just is just sometimes it's yeah it's the byproduct right but i don't i don't think that's the case because the majority of businesses fail Right. And, no, and people know that going in it. And 
it's all about those calculated risk. And if you, if you want to be an entrepreneur because you're in love with money, man, you're going to have a rough ride. Cause one day you're going to wake up. There ain't going to be no money. What's going to get you out of bed. What's going to motivate you. You got to have a, that sense of purpose. So, and I think that's what drives Sandra and I, you know, that sense of purpose. Now don't get me wrong. I want to have a, a certain quality of life, but that's not the reason why I do what I do. Yep. Same with us. We, we genuinely love people and hanging out and, yeah. and laughing and, you know, acting silly. Most of my friends on here know that I'm a, I'm a silly guy. I, you know, send uh, memes and do all kinds of funny stuff. But what kind of memes like, you send, Johnny? What kind I, of like memes? Having, I like having a great time. Yeah. Life is too short to be boring. I agree. I'm not a, I'm not a boring guy. I like, I like having a, a, a good time and just making people laugh and complimenting people and making them feel good. And, and that's, that's what we do. I think yeah. that is life. That's the key ingredient to life, to business, to being a dad, a husband, a friend, a son, you name it. Just having a great time, having a good heart, treating people good, and you know, just going along for the ride. You, you guide yourself with positivity and great people. If you surround yourself with great people, you're going to be okay. You're going to be all right. Yep. If you surround yourself with, with drama and negativity, it's going to be a little rough for you. Yep. I mean, let's just, let's just keep it real. Yep. So that's the truth. You, you gotta, you gotta self-recognize sometimes. And man, if you're, if you're negative, you need to change your surroundings. Yep. And you just got to be honest with yourself too. Whenever you're alone, think about what should I have said that today? Did <laughs> I make the right decision? Ooh, how did I make that guy feel today? How did I make her feel? Should I have said that? So I always self-analyze, and a lot of times, I'm wrong in a lot of things. You know, I'm, I might I might rub people the wrong way. Um, sometimes I come across as a as a you know overconfident guy, but that's that's just the way I I've I've been brought yeah. up. Being you know a military training instructor, I have a lot of confidence, and I try to you know just be level-headed. Where, but I don't. I think I'm equal with everybody. Yeah. Life is about making decisions, decisions and putting yourself in the right positions, uh, putting your family in the right positions, being able to pivot and maneuver, like, like you said last podcast, John. Um, and that, that is life, just setting yourself up. Every decision you make can be good or it can be bad or it can just be, you know, plateau. Try to make enough good decisions in your life to set yourself up. The money will come, the opportunities will grow. And I think you're going to be okay. Yeah. I mean, and sometimes you're, you're just not going to make some people happy. Mm. No, no matter what, no matter what you say, you didn't say it right. You didn't say it right. It, it, you're always going to, in their eyes, you just can't ever get it right. So we can't, you can't worry about that. And I'm, and I'm a people pleaser, but, and sometimes I wish I could put the, my foot in my mouth. Um, mm. Not gonna lie, I've said a lot of things I wish I could take back, or I've said things that didn't come out the way I wanted them. But deep down, I believe that my heart's in the right place. And you know, I've had sleepless nights where relationships were misunderstood and conversations didn't go the way they should have gone. And and uh, and and I, I'm I'm one to to hit it head on. If I have an issue, I'll do my best to say, Hey, man, we need to go have a chat. And, and, and talk through this. And that's one thing that I feel like that even though I might say things that are out of context or probably aren't tactful, I'll recognize it. And later on, I'll, I'll make sure to, to swallow my pride and say, Hey man, that was, that's on me. You know, my bad. So you just got to know you're not yep. always right. You're not yeah. always right. And just people are not going to like you sometimes. Yeah. People aren't going to like your business. People aren't going to like what you say. People aren't going to like what you're about. But yeah. you just got to keep on trucking. You cannot stop just because somebody doesn't like you yeah. or somebody has a bad perception of you. It, and, and with that, hold on. I got, I got one more virtual background before we, before we close. Um, Cause I think it's important. Great and grind, man. Um, earlier. So just so everyone knows that talent times effort equals skill. I think I, I, I found that quote off of Forbes uh website 
And I'm a true believer. If you got grit and you can grind, you're going to outwork anyone with brains all day long. You can be the smartest guy in the room. But if I out hustle you, if I outwork you, I'm going to win. So for all, if you're, if you uh, are thinking about starting your own business or an and entrepreneurship, sometimes isn't starting your own business. You can start a nonprofit. You can start a movement in your community. You can start picking up trash. It doesn't matter. Be a starter, be a Help starter people. and be a closer, yeah. mm -hmm. right? And show grit and get in grind and, and get to work and get to work. Now is the time to get out there and help people. People are losing jobs. People are, you know, struggling with, with life things that, that they're, they can't control. So we need to recognize that as leaders, as, as, you know, community influencers and just people and help as much as you can. Yep. There's people that are struggling to eat, people that are struggling to, to just survive. Yep. So if, if we can give to others, I, I greatly, uh, greatly encourage you to, to, to do your part as a, as a human being and as a steward of uh, community. Absolutely. One, one more go back. Uh, do we, are there any uh, low, any hanging fruit, any last questions before we close? So Diego said, and I remember this, Diego, on Ozark, Dell, is it Dell? Never only, and now I'm, I'm, I'm jacking it up, but if you only talk about business, you're failing. So that is, that is the truth. You got to be, you got to mix it up a little bit. Nobody just wants to hear about your business. Right. People want to know about you and your family and just, you know, they want to hear you jokes and, and things like that. Just be, be a, be a person first. And, and that's, and that's why I probably failed early on in some of those. And especially with ID life in that, in that network marketing, that health and wellness company, because all I wanted to do was, was get people on board. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I wouldn't say I lost those relationships, but, I, th I think I turn a lot of people away. Mm -hmm. So there, man, that's some wisdom. I wish I'd, and it's hard to know. It's hard. Like I knew that. Right. But sometimes it's hard to turn it off. Mm -hmm. It's hard to, to stop it, man. That's, that's a uh, wisdom right there. Thanks, Diego. Yeah. You can't be a one trick pony. Yep. But to everybody, Hey, I appreciate you guys taking the time to listen to Sean and I, um, I, I can't say it enough. You guys rock. Yeah. Thanks for your support. Uh, we're going to try to do these as much as possible. Hopefully we can have more questions uh, prior. We can give you guys a heads up when we're going to get on. So we can just have a list of questions that we can talk about or not only questions, but topics. Yeah. Uh, you know, current events. We can talk about whatever you guys come up with music, sports. I know there's not a lot of sports going on, but yeah. we can talk about, you know, the finals in 1984 or whatever. Or, and, and let us know the best time that you would want us to do this. We're, we're just trying to find out what the best time is. Mm -hmm. Eight o'clock. It's not too late on the East Coast. Still early enough on the West Coast. So maybe, maybe some some guests some guests can come on. Uh, yeah. We can we can make this bigger and we need and some better. music, man. We need some music. Yeah, maybe have some DJs get on and play some music, mix it yeah. up. So this is just a start. This is just the idea. Last week, like I said, or two weeks ago. It was, it was good, but you couldn't hear me. So hopefully you guys can hear me now, but we just plan on just moving this forward and, and doing this weekly. And uh, we can't do it without you guys. So appreciate you. Yep. Appreciate you guys. Y'all stay safe out there. We love you. Keep hustling, keep working and keep inspiring each other. Yeah. We'll see and we're going to get, time. we're going to get past this quarantine. Absolutely. See you guys.